tukiwa tunapoendelea kwa pamoja um, last friday tuliweza ku uh, tazama sura ya nane na tukaanza sura ya, ya tisa. Um, just a minute yeah na tukaanza sura ya tisa, and um, we we did quite a, a, a few things mahali ambapo tulikuwa tumefika uh, so, so chapter 9 starts with the groanings of jeremiah and i liked something that um, um, uh, john john Cuson was saying today about jeremiah that at some times as you go through the book of jeremiah you might not tell the difference between the groanings of jeremiah and the groanings of god himself that that god is um uh, uh, is, is 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 crying because of what is happening um in judah but kire and that and i asked that question uh, last friday yakoba kire kinacho what moves god kire ambacho mungu hapedi na kinamuudhi ndicho pia kinamuudhi yeremaya na kwa hivyo maana wakati mwingine katika maandishi ya, ya kitabu hiki hatufahamishwi nani amesema haya maneno wakati mwingine yeremaya anaweza kuwa dia naye anayeugua moyoni na anatoa maneno ya uchungu alio nao wakati mwingine ni mungu anayeuliza ni vipi ambavyo mmekuwa waasi namna hii how, how have you become the sinful and, and, and you find that at times it becomes very difficult to tell the difference between when jeremiah is groaning and when god is groaning but that is a very beautiful thing to mean that jeremiah's pain is what pains god kile kinacho muudhi yeremaya ndicho kinacho muudhi mungu na tukaona sura ya 9 akisema ya kwamba i wish that um, my head were waters and my eyes are fountain of tears that i may weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people na kwa hivyo ameona yale mabaya na tedeka na nikasema ya kwamba katika kitabu cha Ezekieli uh, yule malaika aliyebiwa aende akiweka muhuri aliweka muhuri wale walio udhika kwa sababu ya mabaya yaliyokuwa yanatekelezwa and that is a question and, and that, 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 that begs to be answered in our lives that other than me being holy am i touched by the sinfulness of other people who are in their sins do i mourn for their sins and do i feel that something needs to be done for them to be drawn back to god and then as we were coming to the end uh, we we looked at um, jeremiah now being told by god that people have become dis, uh, deceptive wana daganyana wao wenyewe kwa wenyewe and there is something that i said as i came to the end that if you want to live well with somebody help them get closer to god praise the name of the lord as as human beings we are created with an inherent selfishness we are created with um vile tulivyo wewe na mimi na kama wewe hauko hivyo then una umaraika mwingi uh, kuliko wanadamu <laughs> wanasifiwe ya kwamba ninapotazama mtu akinikosea ama akiniudhi um, kuna ile hali ya kujipenda ambayo iko ndani yangu kama mwanadamu na kwa hivyo ningetaka nifanyiwe ningetaka hii ningetaka hili but but ninaposoma hili neno the revelation that i get is that my desire for everybody allowed me is that they would know god is that they would live well with god is that they would have such a beautiful fellowship with god and what i know is that if you have a beautiful fellowship with god and i have a beautiful fellowship with god we have a beautiful fellowship together praise the name of the lord i don't know whether you have ever gone to a place eh? let me give these two scenarios where me and you we are friends and me and him we are friends lakini nyinyi mmekosana na sasa tuko mahali sisi watatu sasa sijui ile yote yangu so yeye amekosana na wewe hataki kukuona na wewe umekosana na yeye hautaki kumuona na mimi ni marafiki yenu wote wawili so unapata that is a very awkward situation kwa sasa sijui unapata kwamba huyu anataka attention yangu na hataki huyu huyu anataka attention yangu na, sijui kama you have ever found yourself in such a scenario but how beautiful it is when we are three and we are all just yani tume tumeunganishwa pamoja there is one friend who brings that, us together and we are all in line with that one friend and god is telling jeremiah tell these people be careful with your neighbor because as long as they cannot keep my commandments as long as they cannot obey me as long as they cannot walk in the way that i have desired in their lives they cannot also walk well with you 
hawezi kuwa hawezi kuwa wakiwa wadaganyifu and i hate lies it is you that they will deceive and so god is telling them that and that goes all the way uh, to verse 11 if, if you uh, from from allowed um, verse 4 5 there yes from verse 4 let everybody be aware of his neighbor the tongue is dead rivers 8 shall i not now verse 9 he says shall i not punish these people declares the lord and shall i not avenge myself on a nation such as this i'll take up weeping and waiting for the mount, uh, for the mountains and lamentations for the pastures of the wilderness because they are laid waste so that no one passes through and the lowing of cattle is not heard both the birds of the air and the beasts have fled and i'll gone i'll make jerusalem a heap of ruins a layer of jackals and i will make the cities of judah a desolation without inhabitant what god is doing is bringing out the punishment that will come over judah in a very graphic way maana wakati mwingine huwa tunadaganyika because of where we are mahali ambapo tulipo katika kibiashara mahali ambapo tulipo katika sisi kujisikia kimiri yetu and we forget that what we have is so temporal so temporal we should never trade it for what is to come and so god is telling them you can look at jerusalem now and see how beautiful jerusalem looks you can see how people you know my, my expectation is that even people from other cities walikuwa wanatamani kuja jerusalem kutembea kuona mambo ilivyo lakini mungu anawaambia kwamba what i will do will make jerusalem desolate ya kwamba hakuna mtu atakuweko ngombe hazitasikika the mention of jackals that there will be um a layer of jackals is just to show ni kama you know jackals they are somewhere that that nobody wants to be it's a bad place jackals and you know jackals feed on carcasses and such so he is simply giving them an illustration but remember and we shall see later he he is he is he is, he is willing to receive them back he is willing to have them forgiven and bring them back to himself but he is saying if you don't come back this is what will happen i don't want to preempt that because we will be looking at that verse 12 he says who is the man so wise that he can understand this to whom has the mouth of the lord spoken that he may declare it why is the lord ruined and laid waste like a wilderness so that no one passes through and i've talked about the desolation that will come to jerusalem uh, when the lord uh, brings the punishment uh, uh, to them and the lord says because they have forsaken my law that i set before them and have not obeyed my voice or walked in accord with it but have stubbornly followed their own hearts and have gone after the bars as their fathers taught them several things here that are very important for us to meditate upon that god is answering jeremiah when he asks these questions number one, he is saying the reason i'll punish them is because they have forsaken the law that i set before them so god is saying i have done that which is necessary in terms of letting them know what my expectation is from them one as if you and that is the problem um when it comes to god averting his word to us that there are people who are suffering you know i, I liked it when uh, i asked um uh, brother gaduku um a question and i asked him what about this parent who have done everything that they could do but their children still don't walk in the ways of the lord and his answer was we overrate ourselves one as if we and 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 I, and I, when i thought about that i i thought it's true that sometimes we want to receive more than we are willing to give we want to be blessed more than we are willing to obey you know that that god is saying this word is life and it has been availed but how many people are willing to sacrifice their time look at today how many people are willing to sacrifice their time to come and receive this bread that will keep you alive how many people are willing this the bible says that this scripture is god breathed and it is it is it is sufficient to equip the man of god to instruct the man of god to rebuke the man of god that he may be complete lacking nothing but how many people are going aloud wondering what can i do 
to be a good minister? What can I do to be a, a good Christian? The question is, God has availed what you need to do, but you, you have not availed yourself to receive. And, and that could be seen as forsaking. God is saying, they have forsaken my, so I have availed the law to them, I have taught them, I've made them understand, but they have forsaken, they have forsaken my law that I set before them, and they have not obeyed my voice or walked in accord with it. And that is the second thing, obeying the voice of the Lord. Because not only in the day of Jeremiah, and I think Jeremiah had a very hard time, for me as Pastor Waroi, I know and I have confidence that every time God uses me to speak his word, I know there are people who will resent. Praise the name of the Lord. Whether one or two or three, I know. I know there are people who are keen. The reason why I would take time to prepare myself for this service of hope, that I may come and minister, it is because I know there are people who are hungry and zealous. There are people who are ready to hear the word of God and obey it. But Jeremiah was not as such. Jeremiah was alone and nobody was willing to listen to him. And he preached unrelentingly for almost 50 years. No convert. Nobody, nobody turned yani. You can imagine. 50 years you have been on the streets. You have been at the doors of the temple. You have been in their homes. You have been, and nobody turned. Nobody repented. It must have been very hard for Jeremiah. And sometimes we should encourage ourselves with Jeremiah. That when we call for meetings and people don't come, we are still encouraged. Jeremiah would preach, but nobody, nobody would listen. Nobody would turn. But he would not stop. He would continue preaching. People, it is, people, it is not that people have not heard the voice of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. And I see that every day. It is not that people have not heard the voice of God. The problem is that people are not willing to obey. And we shall see in chapter 10 that the challenge that is before people in obedience of God is because of the alternative presented to them by the world. An alternative that looks better, an alternative like, that, like, that looks as if it is offering instant help. And that is why even when you tell people what they ought to do, it, um, there, there are several times when people will find another route. And that is what was happening here. That God is saying clearly, I am your God, worship me alone. I will give you rain, I'll give you food, I will heal your diseases, I will do all these things for you. But the nations that were living near them, the nations that were living around them, had their own gods for the sun, had their own gods that they believed would bring rain, had their own god that they believed would bring healing. And so the children of Israel, even though they were fully informed about their God being the only one who does all that needs to be done, felt the need and the urge to follow this enticing alternative of these other gods. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is a trap that we find ourselves even today. That God is saying, I will bless your business. That do things my way and I'll give you prosperity. But what happens? We still want to tap from worldly philosophies. We still want to tap from what other people are doing here and there. And you'll find Christians following philosophies that do not align to the call that God has given us. And therefore we become disobedient. Praise the name of the Lord. And for, for, uh, verse 14 says, they are stubborn. They have stubbornly followed their own hearts and have gone after Baals as their fathers taught them. And, and, that, and that also raises a point in terms of our duty and our responsibility as parents to show our children the way that they would walk in it. That God is blaming, they are going astray to the fathers. The fathers showed them that way. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we have to be very careful that as parents we don't show our children a way that will bring judgment on them in future, we have a duty and a responsibility to show our children the way of God and uh, a way that they should go through. And today I was listening to 
Yeah, I was listening to Leverage, um, I think it's uh, Henry Waweru, and he was saying that children are very good at following what they see, and they are very poor at following what they hear. So if you, what you are telling them is not aligned to what they see, you have lost them. And therefore, we should be very careful, even in our unconscious um, actions, that we don't do anything that would give an indicator that a negative thing is positive to our children, because they will watch that and they will follow it. Verse 15, therefore, that says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will feed these people with bitter food and give them poisonous water to drink. So what, what, what the, 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 the chapters that we are going through are quite poetic. And this is sarcasm that God is speaking with. That God is the one who is supposed to give them food and he's the one who is supposed to give them water. And you remember when they were coming from Egypt and going to the promised land, where they are now, there are several things that happened. But two key things that happened is that God fed them with food and God gave them water. And when water was bitter, he ensured that the water was clean and had life and was able to sustain them. But now he is saying, I have done this for you, but you have not trusted me for it. And therefore, what will I do now? I will give you the opposite. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is, and that is a difficult thing when we don't follow the Lord or obey him. Uh, with the whole of our heart, that the things that happen to us are things that we, we would not expect from him. I will scatter them among the nations whom neither they nor, they nor their fathers have known, and I will set the sword after them until I have consumed them. So God is saying, I will, I will judge them. I'll judge them. Verse 17, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider and call for the morning women to come, said for the skillful women to come. So this is still poetic. It's still sarcasm. That he's not like telling them exactly this is what to do. Because what would happen in those days is like what happens in Western Kenya uh, some, of, some of these days where they, they hire, they hire mourners. I don't know whether you've known people hire. You know, there are people who are in the business of mourning. And what would happen in, the, in, in their days is that they would, they were people who were skillful in mourning and they would hire them and pay them to come and mourn, to come and cry, to come and, and weep. And here God is telling them, you are jovial now, you are happy now, you can ignore me now, but please start, start recruiting, start hiring waiting women, start hiring people to mourn on your behalf, said for skillful women to come. Let them make haste and raise our waiting of our eyes, that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids flow with water. For a sound of waiting is heard from Zion. How we are ruined, we are utterly ashamed because we have left the land, because they have cast down our dwellings. So this is more of poetic, so that whether it is God who is speaking it or it is Jeremiah who is speaking it, it is being depicted. It is saying, this is what you will cry when that time comes. When I bring judgment over you, you will cry. And that is the same message that each and every one of us must get. That in the days and the times that we live in, we may find ourselves happy and enjoying. But we must know that if we are not doing things in accordance to the will of God, a time is coming for our mourning. A time is coming for our crying. And the question that you would ask yourself and me is, then what should I do that I don't get there? Do you continue going? Because these are a warning that there is danger ahead. And we as believers must be careful when God speaks to us, either through his servants or speaks to us through his word or speaks to us directly and tells us there is danger. The thing you are doing will not bring good results in your life. What are we supposed to do? Hear, all oh women, the word of the Lord. And let your ear receive the word of his mouth. Teach your daughters a lament, and each to her neighbor a judge. For death has come up into our windows. It has entered our palaces. 
cutting off the children from the streets and the young men from the squares. Speak, thus declares the Lord. The dead bodies of men shall fall like dung upon the open field, like sheaves after the reaper, and none shall gather them. So, and I had talked about this, the, 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 the graphic representation of God's judgment to the children of Israel. Um, but, but this also brings the aspect of nobody is being spared. Why? Because nobody is following me. It is like sheaves that are reaper leaves behind, and none is there to gather them. Because if there were some few who would be left studying because of their faithfulness to God, then they would bury and gather these bodies. But now everybody, all of you have sinned against me. And you remember God telling Jeremiah, go into the city. And if you fight one, if you fight just one, if you fight just one, I'll save that one. Praise the name of the Lord. So this is showing that nobody, nobody remains to be faithful before the presence of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man, now this is very important, 23 to 26 is very key. Thus says the Lord, let not, not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let him who boast, boast in this, that he understands and knows me. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. This is a message to the people. And it's a message to us. That if there is something that is important in the life of any human being, it is not gathering so much wealth. It is not being mighty in power. It is not being famous and being known. Because the, 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 the would I say, the gospel in quotes that is being preached in our day and age is about those things. And we have lost the aspect of understanding and knowing God. That if I know and understand God, I am far much better than anyone regardless of what they may be possessing. Praise the name of the Lord. And God is saying, if anyone may boast, that if I can go out and brag, it should be by my understanding and knowledge of God. And you know, understanding and knowledge drives you to action. Why? God gives three very key attributes about, him, about himself that remain to date. Because we may be operating under a different dispensation in terms of the covenant, but our God is the same. Praise the name of the Lord. So, I am the Lord who practices three things. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, these three things are still being practiced by our God today. It was not only in the day of Jeremiah that I practice steadfast love, I practice justice, and I practice righteousness in the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Steadfast love is the grace of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him does not need to do so much, does not need to sacrifice so much, does not need to give a certain amount of sacrifice. If you only believe, you receive eternal life. You don't perish. Praise the name of the Lord. That is a steadfast, and, and steadfast simply means immovable. That this love is constant. There are other versions that will say love in kindness. There are other versions that will only say kindness. That God is gracious, and that he practices every day. And he calls upon us to receive that loving kindness, that steadfast love. And that steadfast love is only accessed through faith. Whoever believes in him. It is available, but only available to whoever believes in him. Like I've already said, it doesn't matter how beautiful a gift I give you. If you don't unwrap the gift to see what is therein, if you don't take an access, if I give you a piece of bread, if you don't stretch your hand and get a piece of it, put it in your mouth, chew it and swallow it, it doesn't matter how freely I have given it to you. One as if you it cannot help you. And that is, that is what we must understand, that we cannot buy the grace of God. We cannot buy the salvation that God gives us. It is freely given. But again, even if it's freely given, it can only be received because we are intentional. We have faith in, in terms of receiving and wrapping and enjoying the benefits of this salvation. And this is what he is telling these people, that you have sinned. You have done bad things against the Lord. 
But look here, I practice steadfast love. That if you come to me like the prodigal son, I will embrace you. And the embrace that I give you is an embrace of steadfast love. If you offend a human being and they come back to you, you will receive them with a pinch of salt. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, if, if somebody does something really, very bad to you, yes, you can love them again, but human love, there will be, there will be a difference. Praise the name of the Lord. But God is saying, my love is steadfast. It cannot be perfected. There is nothing that can bring it down. Your offerings cannot make me love you more. Your sins cannot make me love you less. I love you just the same way, regardless of your situations. Praise the name of the Lord. My preaching cannot make God love me more. It cannot make, me love, God, it cannot make God love me more. The stealing of a thief cannot make God love him less. The difference between me and that other person is our, is our response to that freely given perfect love. How do we respond to that freely given perfect love? How do we respond to that? And when we understand that God practices that, then we should be able to run to him and receive that steadfast love from him. The second thing he says is that I practice justice. I practice justice. So I'm a just God. I give you what you deserve. Praise the name of the Lord. I give you what you deserve. So if you have responded to my loving kindness, if you have responded to my grace, then in my justice, I forgive you. In my justice, I receive you. If you have refused to respond to my loving kindness, in my justice, I judge you. In my justice, I punish you. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and that is why the next one talks about righteousness. But I think there are versions that will talk about judgment. Because many times we want to think of the loving kindness of God. Check what, is, what might be doing that. We want to think about the loving kindness of God. We want to think about the the things that um, God can do for us, but we don't want to think about God as a judge. God is one who, who sits and asks, guilty or not guilty? Praise the name of the Lord. But you can save yourself from that anguish, from that agony. I believe for every believer, every person who have given their lives to Christ, they will not face the judgment seat of God. They will face the mercy seat of God. That, that seat of grace, it is grace that will justify us. It is not our actions. But for everyone who is not born again, everyone who has not responded by faith to the call of salvation, they will now be judged based on their actions. And I want to tell you, there is no human action that can give you the opportunity in, in eternity. And that is why in Revelation there are books and there is a book. And where there are books, we are told the, the people are judged based on their actions. But the book of life, everyone whose name was found in the book of life, that one was, is welcomed into the kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. And so our ambition is that our names are written in the book of life. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will punish all those who are circumcised merely in the flesh. Egypt, Judah, Edom, the sons of Ammon, Moab, and all who dwell in the desert, who cut the corners of their hair, for all these nations are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart. God here touches the core because, and, and, and you can think about this even in our day and age, 
And if this message is still being preached at the gates of the temple, you can see what God means. Because by circumcision, the children of Israel considered it entry. They considered it admission to the covenant. That the reason why I'm a member of the covenant is I, have been, I was circumcised on the eighth day. And they boasted about that. And every time every man considered himself circumcised, they considered themselves members of the covenant. And they considered these other, safe, these other nations, Egypt, Edom, um, whatever, they considered them not, not circumcised, so not members of, of, of this covenant. But here God says, I will, ramp, I will lump you up together. Judah, you are circumcised, circumcised in the flesh, but you're not circumcised in the heart. Egypt is not circumcised in the flesh, but they're also not circumcised in the heart. So you and Egypt are just the same because you don't do what I require of you. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is what God is saying today, that belonging to a religious outfit, going to religious meetings, even ministering and doing things in church does not qualify you to enjoy the benefits of the covenant as long as you have not been circumcised in the heart. Praise the name of the Lord. That your heart has not been transformed. It has not been changed. Your heart is not seeking after God because there are many people who are in the church but their hearts are not seeking after God. Their heart are seeking after many other things. God is saying, you and the person out there who does not come to church are the same. I will lump you up together when judgment comes. Praise the name of the Lord. And so what I'm looking for is a man, is a woman whose heart is changed and transformed. And deep from within their hearts, they do that which I require of them. So, he is, and that is what God is saying, that don't think you're better because you belong to Judah than those who are in Egypt simply because there is a physical evidence that you have put on, simply because you have a title, simply because you do this and that in church. Beyond doing this and that in church, cultivate a relationship with God. Praise the name of the Lord. For God is desirous of our There's a reconciliation between your heart and yourself. That the things that you say, the things that you do, the intent of your heart, they are all in line with the relationship you have with God. Because there are many people who come to salvation and for sure remain within the realms of, 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 of the church. But in terms of their actions, in terms of their hearts, they left the church long ago. They left their relationship with God long ago. And God is calling upon each and every one of us to work on that. Chapter 10. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, learn not the ways of the nations, nor be dismayed at the signs of the heavens because the nations are dismayed at them. For the customs of the peoples are vanity. A tree from the forest is cut down and worked with an ax by the hands of a craftsman. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails so that it cannot move. Their idols are like scarecrows in the cucumber field and they cannot speak. They have to be carried for they cannot walk do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither is it in them to do good. So several things here, maybe three or four things. The first thing that God is telling his people is that 
do not imitate the way that other nations do their things. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is the challenge that I find um, within the realms of, of, of Christianity. That we have so many believers who are not content with the way that God leads them. Who are not content with the way that God requires things that things are done in his kingdom. And so what they do is that they seek out to do things the way the world is doing them. And that becomes very dangerous. And God here is telling them, learn not the way of the nations. Learn not the way of the nations. And, and, and you may ask me how. And there are many, many things that you may find that people do. And I always say that this word of God is sufficient to provide us with all we need for our living. But how many times do we go out and try to see what works for other people in the world out there and we try to practice it ourselves? How many believers have failed to pray for their own healing and have gone to seek healing from other sources? How many people have gone even into sorcery and witchcraft? But you may not even think about that. You may think about even the philosophy of the way of doing things. Somebody tells you that kunahaka kakitu kanaetaka bahati. And you find people getting such things. Eh, unapata mtu kuna kamuti yata amepanda kwa ke home kwa sababu ni kamuti ka bahati, ni kalehaka bahati. Kalehaka, kanaetaka bahati mzuri. Nana, anatafta hao kamuti, anakapada. That, that, is, that is following the, the, the gods of the world. What are sifiwe? You know, that kuna, kama unaeta interview ya kazi, ukibeba haka kakitu, ukishika hii kitu na mna hii. You know, how many times have I seen a believer unaeta kumpatia pesa na mkono wa left, na kwabia pana, Siwezi, siwezi chukua from the left hand. Kwa sababu hiyo itaniletea bad luck. Lazima unipatie na mkono wa right. What are these beliefs? What are, these are the things that God is talking about. You know, sutika mshua yena kula nyama mahali, ile kamfupa ya pale kwa kamungu ya, ya buzi, anasema lazima aitoboe, bonitika huke. These are just a few of the things. Because sometimes, you know, you know, you know Christianity, and that is why I talked about intentional Christianity on Sunday. Christianity needs to be lived so intentionally that as a believer, I must question every action. I must question question everything that I am required or I need to do. I, I must question. Praise the name of the Lord. That you kijenga nyumba, lazima umwage damu kabra ya kuingia. Atakama akuja chichu abuzi damu imwagwe, we must ask ourselves what, what are we adopting? And God is saying, learn not the way of the nations. Praise the name of the Lord. The second thing that he is telling these people is that don't be scared by what scares the nations. Don't be dismayed at them. Don't be dismayed by the signs of the heavens. That when people are running helter skelter out of fear, that what might this be saying? You know, if you go to the Kikuyulad, you know, when I was young, I could even hear. Siju ukisikia mbwa zime zimelia hivi usiku kucha kuna mtu atakufa hiyo area. So unapata a believer is even scared kama ni yeye atakufa juu mbwa zimeweka usiku. Ama kumeonekana uh, ile all inaitwa nini? Duduru. Dudu dudu du, 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 ya hiyo. <laughs> Maana imeonekana area sasa lazima kuna mtu amekujiwa you know you 
Don't be, don't be scared by the things that scare the people of the world. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why even in this season of coronavirus, whether it is, it is a sign of the end time or it is not a sign of the end time, no believer should be scared. For why should we be scared by the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, if we are ready? Why should we be scared? Why should we be worried about the world coming to an end? Whereas the coming to an end of the world is our, is, is our blessing, is our liberty, is, is our uplifting, is our exhortation, is our leaving this body that feels pain, is our leaving this body that is tormented by simple things in the world and putting on a body that will never wither our lot, a body that cannot be affected by diseases, a body that will never die. Why should the end time scare you and me, who are believers, and it should scare the people in the world? Praise the name of the Lord. And so if you find yourself getting scared by the things that scare the people of the world, ask yourself a number of questions. Ask yourself a number of questions why that is so. The other thing that God says here is that their idols looked smart. They looked beautiful but they were ineffective. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is what happens with the ways of the world, that they may present to us things that look beautiful, things that look nice, but they are ineffective. Yani, haziwezi kureta tofauti. Kwa nini? Zimeudwa na wanadamu wenyewe. Bona sifiwe. So na wauliza, why should you go to something? Ameda kwa msitu, akakata mti, Akakuja, haka utengeneza na nyudo, haka utengeneza na misumari. Sasa, kuwa mtu unawezaje sasa kuwa na nguvu kuliko yeye alia utengeneza. Na ni vipi na njini munaweza kufuata haya mambo? So, wanawambia kwa ba, miungu ya urimuengu, haya mambo ya nafanywa. Yanaweza onekana ni maridadi, yanaweza onekana kama ya nafanya kazi, lakini hayana kazi, ni kama scare cross. Na unajua scare cross kazi yake ni gani? Wana sifiwe. And that is what the gods are. They are scarecrows. They are just supposed to scare away. But the question is, can they do that forever? No, they cannot. They cannot. And of course, this last bit, which, which, which may be tied to that one, is they cannot do evil. Neither is it in them to do good. Because there are times believers walk in fear of worldly gods in terms of what they might do to them. A believer should never walk in fear because of a, another god. No. That a believer ana, ana, anaishi na uoga kwa sababu ya, ya uchawi. Anaishi na uoga kwa sababu ya maneno ya liyo tajwa na, na jirani. Maneno ya liyo tajwa na mtu flani. No, you should not be able to walk in fear because they do not have in them the ability to do evil. So it should not make you fear. Neither do they have in them the ability to do good. So you should not go to them. Verse 6. There is none like you, O Lord. You are great and your name is great in might. This must be Jeremiah saying it. Who would not fear you, O king of nations? For this is your due. For among all the wise ones of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is none like you. They are both stupid and foolish. The instruction of idols is but wood. So this might be a response of uh, Jeremiah to the revelation of who God is and what these are. And if you listen to me during the season abayo hatuku tunaweza kukutana in our online meetings, there is something I emphasized, and I continue emphasizing, that we must get to a point where we live by revelation. Because it is only revelation that can drive you to this point. That I have received revelation and understood who God is, but I have also received revelation and understood what the world idols are. And therefore, when I look at people worshiping those idols, I see foolishness. When I see people doing those things, and believing that these things that can happen, you know, you will find even people who will believe that maybe what I'm going through is because is because 
sijui nani alisema nini na jina yake ndiye huyu anaitwa na mambo kama yale but when you receive revelation and you understand the workings of god there are some things that will never scare you there are some places where you will never la- run for a solution and this is what is happening here that the revelation of who god is that he is mighty he is a king of nations and in all their kingdoms if they were wise they, they would worship him but because they are foolish then um they they try they purport to receive instructions from these idols which are just but wood beaten silver is brought from talshish and gold from ufas they are the work of the craftsmen and of the hands of the goldsmith their clothing is violet and purple they are all the work of skilled men but the lord is true the true god he is the living god and the everlasting king at his love the earth quakes and the nations cannot endure his indignation so it's now a comparison you know and sometimes it is good for you to um to do these comparisons take for example somebody comes and scares you it is good to put that person here and place your god here and try to see do they even compare praise the name of the lord yeah. do they even are they even close that somebody is 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 threatening you that somebody is intimidating you but but he does it and that's why jesus is saying don't fear he who can only kill the body and there is nothing else he can do with it but fear one so sometimes it's always good to to do those comparisons to 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 see my god here and to see the gods of my enemies here to see my god here and to see my challenges here and when you look at them with an eye of revelation you'll be able to see what jeremiah is seeing here thus shall you say to them the gods who did not make the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under the heavens it is he who made the earth by his power who established the world by his wisdom and by his understanding stretched out the heavens when he utters his voice there is a tumult of waters in the heavens and he makes the mist rise from the edge of the earth he makes lightning from the rain and he brings forth the weed from his storehouses uh, i think i've mentioned this before that the existence of god can be justified on two fronts the first one is what we call general revelation and the second one is what we call specific revelation and you may find yourself in a situation where you have to defend your faith or you have to defend the existence of god where you find men and women people who want to purport that they don't believe that god exists and what is important here is that he is bringing out general revelation that by virtue of looking at creation peke yake kuangalia tu maubire milima wanyama mito the lakes the oceans the seas you should as a believer be in a very good position to explain and defend the existence of god one has to feel it and that is something to ponder about and to ask yourself if you met these atheists i don't know whether you've met them personally i have met one or two and you meet them and they want to prove to you that there is no god would you from the perspective of creation be able to present of course you can't you can't defend god you can't fight for god but you can inform these people of the existence of god by virtue of general revelation what they can see praise the name of the lord yeah. and then when we go beyond what we can see we get to the realm of what the origins call specific revelation that after seeing the rivers after seeing the hills after seeing the mountains after seeing the oceans after seeing the seas then i get to a point where god specifically reveals himself to me and as we are away in absence of this creation there is something that i can say about god because of the work and the relationship that i've enjoyed with him praise the name of the lord that egypt 
the Hittites, the Jebusites, for those, they may not have had a relationship with me. But for you, I call you sons. You have a relationship with me. Praise the name of the Lord. People from out there have a general view of who are always. But my children who have a, a relationship with me can from a very specific way explain that this is my father. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is how it ought to be. That we should have specifically interacted with God, received revelation about him, and become strong in terms that I can from, even if there, were, there was no creation, from the work that God has done in my life, from the relationship and the work that I have had with God, I should be able to start and speak about his existence without any doubt. And that nobody, no matter how philosophical, no matter how wise, no matter how good they are with words, can sow seeds of doubts in terms of the existence of my God and in terms of his ability in terms of power, his ability in terms of bringing salvation, his ability in terms of transforming lives and changing me, nobody should be able to sow seeds of doubts in my heart regarding who God is to me and to the world. Praise the name of the Lord. And if you find us getting into a situation where somebody asks you questions, and instead of your convictions rising and putting those questions down, you start thinking, and by the way, and you know, they are very funny in the way they present their questions. And they can easily make you start doubting. You know, they, they can drive you there. But if you have had an encounter, if you have had a revelation, you have specific revelation, then you are able to be fed um, by your God. Wow. Where are we? Oh, 12. It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. Yeah, I think we had gone through there. So what I was simply saying is that it presents who God is and his power, his ability. He's the one who created and everything exists by him. Um, he makes ripening for the rain and he brings forth the wheat from his storehouses. Every man is stupid and without knowledge. Every good smith is put to shame by his idols. For his images are false and there is no breath in them. They are worthless, a work of derision. At the, verse 15, at the time of their punishment, they shall perish. Not like this is he who is the portion of Jacob. For he is the one who formed all things. And Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. So in, in all this part, um, like I said, this poetic, sometimes difficult to understand, is it Jeremiah who is saying it? Is it God who is speaking to Jeremiah in a poetic way and in, in, in a sarcastic way? Or is it Jeremiah who is telling the people? So you, you, sometimes you may not be able to tell the difference. But the message is clear that this is who God is and this is the idols that you have been running after who they are. That even those idols and their makers, the goldsmith and the silversmith, all those guys are foolish without God. So that, and, and that raises a very funny scenario that God gives ma, this man wisdom. Then this man uses the wisdom that God has given him against God himself. It's foolishness. It's foolishness. It's like somebody comes and helps you. Then you start using what he has helped you with to fight him. You cannot win such a battle. You cannot. You cannot win such a battle. Gather up your bird of a 17 from the ground. I'm moving a little bit fast. All you who dwell under siege, for thus says the Lord, Behold, I'm slinging out the inhabitants of the land at this time, and I'll bring distress on them that they may feel it. So this is still requiring judgment. Woe is me because of my heart. My wood is grievous, but I say it so. You can see the mix. So that 
verse 18 is God who is speaking. Verse 19 is purported to be the words of the people after they have been punished, after they have been put through the, the punishment. That woe is me because of my heart. My wood is grievous. But I said, truly this is an affliction that I must bear it. My tent is destroyed and all my cords are broken. My children have gone from me and they are not. There is no one to spread my tent again and to set up my curtains. For the shepherds are stupid and do not inquire of the Lord. Therefore, they have not prospered and all their flocks is scattered. Just two things. One is that previously, I said that God has um, a way of bringing out, like, like this judgment will affect your fields, it will affect your flocks, it will affect your social life. Because sometimes we think that I can defy the Lord. I can refuse to obey the instructions of the Lord and still prosper in certain areas. The Lord requires me to be faithful to him. But I think I can fail to be faithful to God, but my business still prospers. But my children still prospers. That my job, my career still prospers. That my relationship still prospers. And God here is saying, it is not like that. Praise the name of the Lord. That if, if you're not willing to be faithful to me, it will affect everything else. That if you're not faithful to me, it will affect your business, it will affect your, your job, it will affect your children, it will affect everything else. Because sometimes we think we are smart. That I can fail to be faithful to God in the church and believe that my business will prosper because I'm a good marketer, because I can talk to people and convince them to buy. But God is saying no. He's saying no. He's telling them everything. The tent, the cords are broken, the children are gone, there are no animals. Number two, he says, the stupidity of the shepherds is reflected in their inability to inquire of the Lord. And why do you inquire? You inquire so that you hear and obey. Praise the name of the Lord. So they have not inquired of the Lord and therefore they have not prospered. So this is bringing the aspect that even in the, in the, in the shepherding, because you may say, I know where there is good pasture. I know how to take care of my sheep when they are sick. But God is saying, even in the shepherding of your sheep, inquire from me. And that would be my word today. In your marriage, inquire from the Lord. In your business, inquire from the Lord. In your career, inquire from the Lord. In your parenting, inquire from the Lord. In your dressing, inquire from the Lord. When you want to build a house, inquire from the Lord. When you want to buy a plot, inquire from the Lord. When you want to buy a car, inquire from the Lord. Don't do anything without hearing the voice of the Lord. Without receiving a revelation and an instruction that God needs to give you. Because he's saying why the shepherds are stupid is because they have not inquired from the Lord. And because they have not inquired from the Lord, they have not prospered and all their flocks are scattered. Why some of our things are scattered is because we don't inquire from the Lord. Verse 22, a voice, a rumor, behold it comes, a great commotion out of the north country to make the cities of Judah desolation, a riot of jackals. I know, O Lord, that the way of man is not in himself. So an interchange again. That it is not in man who walks to direct his steps. So Jeremiah says these words, and they are very truthful, not only then, but even now. You know, the Bible says that, that there's a way that looks good in the eyes of man, but its end is destruction. And that is why I'm talking about seeking the leading of the Lord. That I know, O oh Lord, that the way of man is not in himself. That it is not in man who walks to direct his steps. And that is why we must push off the motivational speaking that is brought about that says, believe in yourself. That says, seek to know yourself, understand yourself, but removes the the, 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 the part, the role of God in that journey of self-awareness. That if we have to actualize our 
talents. If we have to stir up our giftings, we must stir them up while we are in the Lord and seeking the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why I wrote Achievers in Christ. And this month and next month, I'm selling them at a discount, 50%. So to get Achievers in Christ, 250 shillings. Kira mtu apata kwa sababu, hiyo bayi taongezeka badai. And from the pastor's heart at 350. Na wale walinunua at the original price, msianze kusema mbigongo. It's an offer. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, I need to clear some stock I have so that I can get more on board. Correct me, O Lord, but in justice, not in your anger, lest you bring me to nothing. So, Jeremiah is speaking what is expected of the nation of Judah. That it is the nation of Judah that should be saying this. And I wish that all of us who have fallen short of the grace of God, he is willing to forgive us. We can say, correct me, O Lord, but in justice, not in your anger, lest you bring me to nothing. Pour out your wrath on, na on the nations that know you not, and on the peoples that call not on your name. For they have devoured Jacob. They have devoured him and consumed him, and they have laid waste his habitation. That ought to be the cry of the man of God, of the nation of God. What component do we have in this cry? Component number one is the acknowledgement that God is the one who is able to direct and correct. Component number two is the acknowledgement of their sin. So that when you're saying, correct me, you are, you are accepting you have gone astray. You're acknowledging you've gone astray. But you are ready, the, the third component is the willingness to be corrected. I don't know whether you have ever dealt, and it is, it is, it is energy draining to deal with a person who is not willing to be corrected. You know, you have somebody here who is going astray, and you know they are going astray, you know they are going to destruction, and you're telling them, this is the way. But they are not willing to be corrected. But if you have to make this prayer, you must be willing to be corrected. But a component about three there is the invocation of the relationship between them and God. That they are saying, the other nations don't know you and they don't regard you. But for me, at least Mungu, Nahusiano, we have a relationship. Praise the name of the Lord. So deal with me in a smoother way that is not in your love. So that is the end, that is the end of uh, um, uh, chapter 10. We'll come and look at, uh, from chapter 11, there is a change of tone um, as we look at, at, the, at the broken covenant and uh, God, what God is saying. And then we hope to also do chapter 12 where Jeremiah is complaining before, before the Lord. Um, and as Jeremiah complains, we will see how God uh, speaks to him through the ruined loin cloth, very deep teachings here, chapter 13, the jar filled with wine, and, and all those other things that we shall be able to run. But I want to hope that the Lord will minister to us and speak to us and help us understand what he wants us to understand from these words as, as we proceed. So let us bow our heads and pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We are so grateful for an opportunity to study your word. Thank you for you are the one who is teaching us. Sometimes without our knowledge, we have adopted and taken on board the ways of the nations. And we have failed to acknowledge and allow you to be the mighty God that you are, the King of Kings the creator of heavens and the earth. We have sometimes even in our thoughts failed to acknowledge that place and failed to acknowledge who you are. Because sometimes in our thoughts and in our inner selves, we have worried ourselves almost to death. We have mistrusted and felt like we are not making it, forgetting that everything belongs to you. We have seen the wildly things looking mighty and great in our faces and have forgotten that you are the one who created them and therefore they cannot overpower you. Sometimes you have walked in anxiety. You have been depressed because we have feared 
that the gods of this world, the idols that other people worship would do us harm. Forgive us and allow us to enjoy your loving kindness. That Lord, you may correct us not in your wrath, but in your love. That we may continue enjoying a fellowship and a relationship with you. And that these things that we have done that may have angered you may not count as we believe and trust in you. Thank you for each and everyone who've received this word, oh God. Those of us who are here in church and those who followed online, I pray that, Lord, you will remember each and every one of us and help us to identify areas in which we have gone astray and left your ways, that you may bring us back to yourself, that we may continue enjoying a fruitful relationship with you. If there be any one of us who is going through a distressful moment, I pray that, Lord, you will redeem us, that you'll come through and deliver us. You'll come and heal us, heal our physical bodies, heal our hearts, heal our minds, and enable us to trust in you. Help us to spend ourselves and spend hours in the search of knowing you, that, Lord, we may boast that we know you and we understand that you practice loving kindness, you practice justice, and you practice righteousness. As we depart, we pray for your peace, pray for your grace upon our lives, be together with us and be gracious to us. We thank you and we worship you, for this is our prayer of faith. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May the Lord turn his countenance towards you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. Amen. God bless you. See you on Sunday. Amen. Amen.